Uh, the needs assessment was, um, it's part of the Core West program, which is really a partnership between all the clean cities and the in Intermountain Waste West states, and then um, the Rev West partnership, which is the state energy offices, as well as the departments of transportation in those states. Um, so all those groups are, in, are dedicated to uh, building out fast charging infrastructure throughout uh, interstate corridors, um, big uh, yeah, interstates, highways, things like that. Um, but one of the one of the big barriers we were facing was demand charges and electric service rates. Um, it was just kind of creating electric bills for site hosts that were not sustainable in any way. Um, they weren't making nearly close to that money back, and they just couldn't afford to maintain operations. Um, we've had multiple cases where um, groups have invested in fast charging infrastructure and then had to throttle back speed so that it wasn't even charging at fast rates um, because of the electric bills they were facing. Um, so the goal of the demand charge assessment is really to take a snapshot of what it's like to be a site host around the Intermountain West. Um, so we took a sampling of 41 different um, service providers, um, five from each state, and then also the Navajo Tribal Electric, which uh, has a large interstate territory, um, and really uh, created some kind of a modeling. Uh, we modeled a sample charging scenario and then basically applied that across nine different scenarios um, three different power levels and then three different station usage levels and then um, from there basically inserted those specifications into all the different rate structures for and then um, from there basically gave estimate bills for site hosts sure and i saw from the assessment, it looks like um, regional average for one charging event at 300 kilowatts was $835. What does that figure mean in relation to these bill rates, I guess? Essentially, we're finding that the either the cost per charge or the cost per kilowatt hour is way above what normal electric customers um, pay for electricity. So the regional average for the same eight states is nine cents per kilowatt hour. Um, we have scenarios where the average cost is approaching $30 a kilowatt hour. So like hundreds of times higher, higher fees than normal electric customer space. Um, so one, one, of the, one of the big findings from the report is that <clears throat> at low station usage, it essentially kind of kills the economic model for, I guess we shouldn't use kill economic model in this, but um, it, it basically like makes it so site hosts can't make back their money because there's such big fees associated with even a single charging event that it's gonna take hundreds of charging events to then balance out that very first cost that they're facing. So, um, one of the promising things we found in the report is that in our high use scenario, which is kind of like a more electric future outlook, um, basically every rate structure we looked at has affordable pricing for EV fast charging. So it's really more of a short term problem until demand picks up because right now when you don't have as much usage to balance out the like one upfront initial charge, you're seeing things like even in low power scenarios, the average cost per charge is like almost $150 per charge, which is what, like four or five times what people pay for gasoline and electricity is cheaper than gasoline. We know that. Um, so, um, so yeah, that, that was um, kind of the, one of the big things we wanna demonstrate is that um, it, under current demand rates, it basically creates an environment where fast charging is not economical. Um, but um, one promising thing we found is once uh, more EVs are on the road and usage of these station picks up, it, it, the current rate structures would be working. How does this impact, I guess, everyday people? And did we mostly survey, uh, you know, electrical companies or in communities in rural areas, or what was kind of the target audience for this? Yeah. So. Um, what we did is we picked five service providers for state. Um, we started out picking the largest investor-owned utility, 
the largest municipal utility and the largest rural cooperative. So we had at least one of those utility types from each state. And then after that, we picked, um, we had a few criteria we walked through. So after that, it was just like the next biggest service provider. Most states had two really big IOUs that serve most of the state. So basically all of those are represented. And then after that, we targeted rural cooperatives um, that have territory along service gaps and then also near national and state parks. Um, so the goal was to kind of just get a sampling of different service providers and different types of service provider, different sizes throughout the states. Um, so, so that was the goal. And then we're just kind of looking to demonstrate the differences in site hosts costs for that. Um, and we actually found a, a few different um, areas of like uncertainty for site hosts that were kind of concerning. Um, first of all, if they're working on a regional network, they need to work across utilities and across different rate structures, things like that. But then even within individual sites, um, rates can change by the hour. If there's peak pricing, they can change by the season because most, most service providers have seasonal rates. And then also um, a lot of utilities had kind of jumps in rate classes within the range of what electric vehicle service um, charging speeds are at. So we picked 41 utilities, but we had to look at almost, we had to look at 73 different rate structures, almost twice as many to actually get an accurate look of what it would cost in all those areas. Sure. So part of the Core West um, initiative is identifying infrastructure gaps. And so I guess this kind of aligns with that, but I get how all of this plays into removing barriers, but is there any like, actionable item that can come from this besides I mean the knowledge is great yeah um so so yeah I get we we really did steer clear of trying to make recommendations because um a lot of a lot of utilities like the way they like decide what to invest in is really like depends especially with rural co-ops it's like what do their members want so it so there's kind of like a disconnect there with the rural co-ops because they're kind of like the last people that are buying EVs, but, and it's also the hardest place to like have an economic charging station. But if you don't work with those groups, you're gonna have big gaps in between your cities and people can't drive between cities. So, um, so, but we did kind of steer clear of making recommendations. We highlighted a couple good case studies within the report um, of, of utilities that have affordable rates and kind of explained what about their rates made it affordable. Um, so there's, I think like four case studies from in the paper and then a, three case studies from outside the region. Um, so the goal is really to, I guess, kind of get the information about there of like really how bad the situation is because like, if you tell any people that work in utilities that they're charging people like five dollars per kilowatt hour and that's like the best number in the report like that's a hundred times what they should be charging and people's like ears pop up um so i think that's um we, we kind of had heard a lot of this on a on a like case by case basis but we wanted to like show it to people and then also to kind of identify some case studies and see what's happening in other parts of the country to get a few um, options in front of people of how they could consider changing their rates. Sure. And I don't know if this is necessarily a question for you, but getting those rates down, is that, you know, federal funding? Is that just, you know, more, uh, you know, more supply or what's... Yeah. Um, so it's confusing. Uh, so, because the utilities are, rate, are regulated in such different ways. Uh, like, the IOUs, which tend to be like the biggest service providers like Rocky Mountain Power, um, NV Energy, states can compel them to do stuff. So that's what's happening, um, at least in Colorado and Nevada, they're basically being told like, work with us and we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Um, but municipal utilities and rural co-ops are not regulated. They get to make their own decisions. So there it's really more about like information sharing, 
like it's more of like a carrot approach, whereas the IOUs you can you can tell them what to do through regulatory processes, um, and that's happening. Um, but then you know they they're only covering maybe like thirty percent of the area of a state. So it's really about trying to identify models that work for utility for the smaller utilities that really like don't quite have the capacity to be undertaking new projects. And that's a lot of what Core West is about, is trying to centralize those resources, for, like provide case studies, um, just make it really easy for people to get engaged. Like go to the website, like here's your resource list, here's the people in your state that you should be connecting with if you wanna move forward on this type of project. Um, yeah, so th this was meant as more of a data piece. And then we're aiming to do a follow-up piece because um, sort of about ways that uh, new technologies like battery storage or um, re or generation on site can be used to kind of reduce the effects of these demand charges. So we are going to do some follow up work um, about like different strategies that can help deploy stations. Um, but in terms of this report, their idea was really just kind of like see what the situation was and get that data out there to people.